So, uh, we're okay, as long as we don't reach the edge of the map. Let's just analyze this one real quick, and we'll clear the target, and then we'll turn around. Okay. Sorry about that, Rhino. Shooting zoomed in takes, takes away from your peripheral vision. And no problem, PC. So, uh, exactly, that's why I don't do it. I only zoom in for really long range shots, that 600 to 1000 out shot. That will uh, take anyways. So take a look at your bullet pattern, see if you're hitting the exact cross there. See if it's a 10 foot wide bullet pattern or wider. If you're uh, using your rudder to adjust a lot and shooting with your feet, as I call it, you're going to have more of a slashing kind of pattern than the uh, normal tight circle. You can notice of my 6 o'clock shot pattern there. So any observations on, on your bullet patterns? One that you missed badly or one that's not a real good tight circle? Uh, left one I had to do more slashing than the other ones. Bottom one and top one are off a bit, but the uh, right and center have been good. Okay, good. How about you, Voodoo? How would your bullet stream look here? Uh, uh, my my dead pattern. center dead center was good. My 12 o'clock was good. All my other three I was shooting with my feet. Uh, I was zoomed in was one thing. And the other deal is uh, you want to make sure that folks have their aircraft good and trimmed up if they're if they have that kind of setting going because mine's pretty twitchy. Of course, my sensitivity is very high anyway. And so that caused me to take a little more time and each movement was exaggerated way out there with my slashes. Right. And w the other thing I noticed if you're shooting with your feet, see I try not to use my rudder too much. You don't want to push your rudder in and out. Like go ahead and kick a little left rudder and then release it. And you'll notice what happens. It swings back and forth and back, kind of wobbles until it settles. Yeah, Roger. Everybody get that same sort of effect? Yep. Now, just kick a little left rudder and, and hold it a little bit. There's, a, there's less wobble there, right? So you kind of want to rudder into the shot, hold it, take your shot, and then release. Yeah. You're still not... Uh, pulling any G's, so you're, not, you're, uh, you're still pretty much unloaded, but you're just uh, slewing the aircraft, skidding the aircraft a little bit. And, and uh, a lot of times guys, they kick rudder and then they release to try to get it back on target. And that's when you get a little more of those slashing patterns instead of the nice tight circle. A hard deck exists for your safety and the safety of your fellow teammates. <laughs> yep, let's turn around. Left turn to zero nine zero. You are in the no fly zone. <laughs> Glad we have a air traffic controller here with us. I just messing with you. No, that's cool. I was just about to give the call to turn around. Uh, dot target, z space zero, clear her out. Let's get our speed. If you need to descend a little bit, nose down slightly to get to 300 mile an hour in, uh, indicated. Ah, 300 miles an hour indicated is different from 300 miles an hour true. Level her out. Bring the target up again. Dot target. Space 325, space 90. Line up on the bullseye. You can go out a level if you want. You dirty bastard. Get her a little, trimmed out a little bit. I also like to use trim for angle for this. There it goes. That's not too bad. And then, uh, is everybody ready? 
Wheeler ready. Booty's ready. Are you bringing the target up to what? 650 or what? 325. So dot target space 325 and then uh, space 90. And we should be flying east now. Let me know when you have your pipper on the bullseye, TC. Now again, with this exercise, this is something I do as a little bit of a warm-up in just about any plane. I can get a little feel for maneuvering it a little bit, get some precise shooting. If I don't have my rudder pedals or uh, something calibrated just right, I'll notice that. Or if I have to scale my stick a little bit. This is a good way to kind of hone your setup. You got your target up, TC? Yeah, I'm perfect. Alright, so we're going to fire at the center. And this time we're gonna sh we're gonna pull left. This one will be a little harder. We're gonna pull left and shoot nine o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, and then twelve o'clock. So the last target will be at the top. You will be working against your torque because we have left hand torque, and you're gonna be trying to push the plane down and right. You might have a little harder time with this one. A rudder to do this, or am I just shooting uh, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 6 o'clock? You're going to shoot 9, 6, 3, 12. Bullseye first, so five total uh, shooting targets. Bullseye, then 9, 6, 3, 12. And I prefer to just use roll. I try to use my rudder as little as possible. Just as Voodoo was just seeing, you're going to getting more of a slashing pattern if you do that. Whatever allows you to concentrate your bullet pattern as tight as you can get it. And you can experiment with that. If you can shoot well with your feet, that's great. Okay. I find if I just use roll and, and less rudder input, I get a tighter pattern. You kind of roll into the shots and uh, unload right when I'm shooting. All right, so uh, I'm going to give a three, two, one countdown and then commence. Three, two, one, commence. I did it. <laughs> two second burst in each target. Let's see. And I took I'm a shooting my feet. Because that's what I do. Fire at three o'clock now. You notice a slash on that one. Fired 12 o'clock now. Complete. Complete. It's, I shoot with my feet all the time, so for me complete. to slash it is is a normal thing. I'm complete. But you'll notice that the nose up, right. nose down was pretty much. You notice on. a little more uh, difficulty, or go ahead and zoom in and look at your target. I thought it was easy to shoot that. See if you see a little difference in your bullet pattern there. The right was pretty crappy, but the left was okay. I was shooting with the great field. bullseye and great three o'clock. I'm a little under on nine o'clock, a little to the left on twelve, and a little all over on six o'clock. Yeah, I find that six o'clock one isn't too easy because yes. you're uh, you're already pulling left, and then you're working against the torque there to get that nose down and to the right. How'd you do, Voodoo? What's your uh, patterns look like? Uh, dead center's good. 12 o'clock is good. My 6 o'clock was actually was good, too. I shoot with my feet a lot, so my left was good. It was good. It was slashing, but it was still a good pattern. And then the right was a little bit too much. I shot almost into the third mill ring. And then uh, off paper right there at the edge is, is pretty good density, but still a little bit slashing on left and right. Oh, okay. Now a little slashing horizontally is okay, assuming the target you're shooting at is in level flight. Right. My six o'clock is slashing. Because you're just, you're just pouring them into his wings, but 
The problem uh, is you're hitting his pattern. wings in a lot of different spots. Yeah. And you're not concentrating fire. You're not getting perfect and loaded. And putting bullets more into the same spot. So so that's really what this exercise is all about. Exactly. And again, this is something you can do at different ranges. Let's try it now at um, what I call inside convergence. We're going to zero out this target, then we're going to make a turn, and that's so that nobody runs into the mountain here at 33. Voodoo, you're probably getting close to. And you'll never see it because you'll have your target in front of you, and then bang, you'll be in the mountain. So clear your target, uh, go ahead and make a turn back to 270. Dot target space zero to clear it. Loop back around to the west. And this time we're going to bring up a target at 162.5 yards. So dot target space 162.5 space 270. Oh my god, it's huge. No, I'm just missing. I slid in big rat. Say that again. Dot target space. 162.5 space 270 and enter. See, my trims won't what pull my nose. Uh, uh, we're on 270. We're on west. So, I actually need to get it to try. Okay, and one second. Let your plane settle back at 300 miles an hour. That should bring your pipper Come pretty on, close. Go to Bullseye. My, see my trim. My sensitivity is too high. Any little bit of trim will really Bring get my pepper right? to go off target. So you want to, if your if your sensitivity is extremely high, like your stuff, you have almost about no three hundred uh, indicated. Then should get you level with. Uh, start to mess with, with your trim. Sight. It's going to be well, really sensitive. It's going to okay, cause some trouble. Okay, give me the target one more time. Yeah, throw in a little web. Dot target. Space 162.5, space 270. Your inner ring should be right on the on the inside circle. Now this time, I'm a little bit off. Uh, you might have to adjust your heading just a little bit. What's your indicated airspeed? Essentially, if you can get your pipper, like mine's not dead center, but it's pretty close, and it wasn't on there. So I didn't copy that. Either. So what you're wanting is within your pipper, you're wanting to try and keep it in, hypothetically, okay. your inside, your inside so if you're gun side. you're on due side. west, you should have a pipper right close to the bullseye. And so if you can keep it right around, centered around that bullseye as your initial And let's just, this time, we're going to do it. That's right on it now. Perfect. We're going to do a test fire pattern. Now, remember, at inside convergence, we're low. The guns are six feet below uh, the line of sight. They've only risen half the target, so we're about three feet low. You see that? We need to adjust our fire three feet up. Yep. And we're going to fire with the left wing guns hitting. So you're going to aim to the right, at least five feet, and three feet up, so that one of those two bullet streams is hitting the bullseye. We're going to shoot 12, 3, aim. 3, 6, 9 again. 12, 3, 6, and 9. We're going to aim right. Say it one more time. So you're going to pretty much aim. You'll need to aim right approximately five feet from it. So like right where and my indicator is. Increase your elevation about three feet from the target. So you're, you're shooting in this upper right hand quadrant in the 12 So basically to up and to the right just a little bit for each target. Just a touch. The objective here is to hit the uh, target. With only this set of wing guns, your left wing guns, sure. these three guns. With the left bank of guns only. And not worry about your right guns at all. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to kick a little bit of right rudder and so pitch up ready, slightly. So when you're ready, go ahead and stay ready, and then I will give the countdown to commence. 
Ready. Booty's ready. But now you may just you may just want to like ready, I think. kick it to the right and a little bit of nose <laughs> up. But <laughs> okay. I'm gonna kick some right rudder. So three, two, one, mint. Pull up to twelve. Left. Fire up and to the right of the target. Final complete. I gooped up. Both of mine here. <laughs> Wheeler complete. It is complete. Way to go. Alright, bud. It looks like crap. <laughs> now, that one's a little tougher, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's a little different, little different sight picture. Because you're aiming with your pipper, really. You're, you're not putting your pipper on the target in order to hit. Oh, of course, now my pipper's dead on. Look at it. Look that at that beautiful right there thing. That is the art of deflection shooting or leading. It's usually battle damage for me. Because you're not aiming with your pipper, you're aiming via a sight picture. Aiming a certain distance ahead or above enemy aircraft. So, uh, kind of hone that, that what, what I call one wing shooting. Because you're really just hitting with the one bank of guns. Uh, on, the, on the target, the bullseye. Uh, if you were firing at an airplane, both wing both gun banks would be hitting, right? Because they're only uh, nine feet apart, those two bullet streams. If you notice my videos a lot well, of times... What's the object there? Because both of mine hit the target. Hitting the target, but the bullseye point where the vertical line crosses the circle or the horizontal line crosses the circle is kind of the absolute bullseye. And the objective there was to hit just with the one bank of guns. And you could do really the same exercise on your own, uh, just shooting with the thank you. Where that works at is if you How say if you get them as you pull on your piper about to half hit this the distance one gun to hit the and then hit them in a turn uh, with just one wing bank. Right or left. Like if there was a guy pretty much Three right here in the middle the of a turn, uh, you could hold position. off and high and actually hit him with one set of three and actually still down the guy. You'll notice with my 303s, a lot of times I'll close too close. You'll see all of my guns. We'll give that one uh, one more go, and then we'll take a short break, and then I'm going to come back and uh, finish the course with uh, one wing shooting with what I call my small miss small exercise. And I'll give you a couple other tips uh, on offline practice you can do. That'll wreck work. Hell, that's hard. Yes, uh, how to aim with the one bank of guns, and you're not really in bullseye. I think you're not aiming necessarily fuselage to the enemy to hit them. Sometimes I'm in uh, his wing tip, and that's going to hit him in the wing root. Well, that's something I stress or with the, the KI-43, is that you have to work wing roots. You can't just shoot at the fuselage because you don't have a, a big enough guns. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, unless you have a deflection shot where you can hit him in the cockpit and kill him, you're absolutely right. Wing root is really the best place to aim. Cockpit is the best place because you can kill the pilot. But next to that, wing root is the way to go. And that's why we're practicing this one wing shooting. Because if you close in... And then if you, you know to elevate guns... Exactly. If you understand how your ballistics, how your rounds will fall and impact like on gonna, the target I'm real close the versus far... Gonna do what? The voodoo? 
I'm just going to demonstrate something with uh, Voodoo real quick. Roger. Sorry, I had to clear my target and that messed me up on my uh, turn there. So give me a little, uh, give me a little S in there, Voodoo. Come uh, to north. Roger, north. Yeah, if y'all want to kind of up. I'm watching there. Wheeler, uh, Wheeler, why don't you see if you can form up uh, about 300 yards in front of t uh, TC. Okay, go ahead and come to uh, east, Voodoo. Roger, turning east. So, Wave, are you going to get 300 yards in front of me? Yeah, Wheeler's going to be your PC. I'm going to be uh, Voodoo's target. Go up, uh, go ahead, uh, saddle up on me at, uh, at Convergence. Voodoo. Copy. I'm reducing some throttle just a touch. Okay, but I'll use this, this gun sight. And I don't use this conversion setting, so I'm a complete noob tonight. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. I'll throttle back to you pick up speed. Okay, when you get uh, to uh, copy, 350 yards there, Voodoo, which you got some close. Now. I want to throttle back just slightly. Uh, reduce closure speed a little. I've got about 275 indicated. I want you to put your pipper right at the uh, crossing point of my uh, horizontal stabilizer. I'm sorry, we're doing this at half convert. I want you to get to 162 yards. Garage. Copy that half convergence wheeler. I'll throttle back there. Uh. Yeah, I just I just reduced throttle. Copy that. Scrubbing some speed here. I'm reducing speed there, TC for you. So as you get to 162, put your pipper on. Um, it's probably just above my cockpit, right at the full horizontal stabilizer. Point. And give me a burst, and you should see hit lights both wing roots. Almost exactly. You want me to I was a little bit right. Three hundred or, or one sixty-two. Yep, good hits. One sixty-two. One sixty-two. One sixty-two. I got him. And fire when you're at when you're seeing one six two three six. I got both wing roots. There you go. You're aiming a little bit higher. Your pipper is higher than where your bullet's been. Got them right where right where right where they bend at. Yep, that's what you should be doing. Go ahead and take some more shots if you want, TC. Roger. I'll do one more time, then you can come shoot me. All right. Light me up, Voodoo. Copy. Roger. Let me get back to that proper distance. Yeah. Wh what range you got right now? Uh, 180 stretch in 200. I'm speeding up. I overshot you. I didn't hear any shots. Yeah, Roger. See, I'm 260. There's 60 yard lag. Yeah, I got 230 right Come on now. back in, Wheeler. That's a little better. Yeah, 240. 180, 170. Ouch, there goes both wings. Alright, good stuff. So you can kind of see the uh, L difference. When, when in the wings, your pipper's held a little. It's even dramatic when you're closer. 
get right off of me here on the scissors just a little. Those look good. Try the inside of a hundred yards. I'll bash you up now. Cam level zero six zero. Roger, I'm low five o'clock, Leslie. Gotcha. What's your indicated? Uh, two fifty. Right, so 225, so you should have some closure. Closing now at 140. Now, if you shoot inside of 100, you're probably going to want to uh, the single wing. Get to some speed up there, Leila. Yeah, I am way off target. Yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, you pretty and much. With that, uh, what's that sight picture like? If you pretty much hold, if you put your pipper just a, about one elevator width high and level with it, you'll pretty much put that left bank of guns right on the fuselage every time from under 100 all the way to zero. Yep, there you go. So, uh, is your aim, you're aiming high, and uh, you're aiming a little to hit with the left bank, as you said? Yes, sir. Okay, I think an important point to illustrate. It's going to come in handy in our next little exercise. Let's take a little uh, break here, five And uh, we'll reconvene here right at uh, 33 again. Everybody wanted a little short...